Again with a B by Liza Ketchum, Jacqueline Briggs Martin, and Phyllis Root. Illustrations by Claudia McGehee. What's inside this hole in the ground? One B. One queen rusty patched bumblebee waiting all winter long. And here's the wonder. Her tiny body, not even an inch, holds everything she needs to create a whole colony of bees. This year's bees. What else waits all winter under the ground? Seeds and roots for flowers that bloom early and late. Flowers with nectar and pollen for bees. Sun shines, earth warms, seeds and roots sprout and grow. Flowers open and that one queen rusty patched bumblebee crawls from the ground, flies flower to flower, maybe plum blossom, wild geranium, shooting star. What is she searching for? Nectar and pollen. She eats, 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 and eats, then zigs and zags flying low. Where will she nest? Underground best, an abandoned mouse burrow, an old mole hole, or a hollow stump a fallen tree, even an empty coat pocket will do. What will she make when she finds a nest? All by herself, she builds a pot with wax from her body and fills it with nectar for days too cold or rainy to fly and days when she sits on the eggs she will lay. All by herself, she carries pollen in the pollen baskets on her back legs. Once in the nest, she shapes a lumpy pollen ball, then lays her eggs, seals each egg safely inside. All by herself, she sits on the eggs and shivers to keep them warm. One day, two days, three days, maybe four days, maybe five, then eggs hatch. Are they bees yet? No. Little white grubs, no eyes, no legs, eating machines. All by herself, the queen flies, flower to nest, nest to flower, wild lupine, wild cherry, service berry, feeding her larvae, nectar and pollen. They grow and shed their skins, grow and shed, grow and shed, grow until they poop just once, then make cocoons with strands of silk from glands near their mouth. Now are they bees? Almost. They're pupa. One week, two weeks inside the cocoon, pupa turning into finally bees, worker bees, all of them female, none of them queens, all with a rusty patch on their backs. Some workers clean the nest, some workers fly to find nectar and pollen to feed the queen. Again and again, the queen lays more eggs as many as 500 over the summer. More eggs, more larvae, more pupa, more worker bees. Late in the summer, when goldenrod, gentian, aster bloom, a change. Now, eggs hatch into males, each with a rusty patch on its back, and next year's queens. They fly and mate with bees from nearby rusty patched colonies. Flowers drop seeds, seeds that started when bumblebees buzzed, the pollen loose from the flowers, carried it from blossom to blossom, joe pie weed, coneflower, milkweed, 
seeds that can sprout and grow into next year's prairie, next year's garden. First frost. Flowers wither, turn brown, die back to the ground. Bee season ends. Bees die too. Except, what's inside this hole in the ground? Next year's rusty patched bumblebee queen. Seeds drop, snow falls, in the dark hole all by herself, the new queen hibernates. She waits for spring for the earth to warm and here's the wonder. Her tiny body, not even an inch, holds everything she needs to create a whole new colony. Next year's bees begin with a bee. I hope you get a chance to look at this beautiful book and watch the journey of a one rusty patch bee making her whole colony throughout the summer and then hibernating again for next winter. There's some more information on rusty patch bumblebees at the back of the book, as well as 10 things we can all do to help be a friend of the bees.